Up next, our main event, Joe Casamayor versus Joe Morales for the WBA Super Featherweight title. Well, while Cuba has sent such all-time greats as Kid Chocolate, Luis Rodriguez, and Jose Napolis to the pro ranks, there's no arguing that Joel Casamayor is the finest Cuban-born pro of recent vintage. But the Southpaw is not satisfied with that distinction. He wants to prove he's the best 130-pounder in the world. He also feels Asselino Freitas has been postponing the inevitable. The cancellation of the July 14th fight has changed my life. Freitas didn't want to fight me. I was ready to fight whenever. He's always backing out, saying he has managerial problems or this problem or that problem. I had the table set for him to come to eat. He has changed the fight day four or five times. It's not my fault. He is the one that's backing out of the fight. It's always an excuse. He's getting married or this or that. I have a name for him, the princess. I am ready for him whenever he wants. It's up to Freitas and his managers. I am ready for him at whatever hour. In Brazil, in China, in Japan, or wherever. Maybe for other people he's a challenge, but not for me. To me, he is nothing. He can't touch me. Very strong words from Casamayor, who waited a long time for his freedom. So perhaps from his perspective, his wait to establish himself as the division's best hasn't really been that long at all. And Bobby, as we heard, Casamayor accusing Freitas of ducking him, that all the distractions and disruptions and inactivity is just a smokescreen. Is there any validity to that in your mind? Well, that criticism may not be completely unwarranted. Understand that Casamayor wanted this fight, had this fight twice. It's been postponed, always by Freitas. And I'm not so sure he ducked him out of fear that he can't beat him, but it was a tumultuous time in his life. Personally and professionally, he had a lot of problems, managerial-wise, in his personal life. I don't think he was ready to step up to a fight of this magnitude. Now he claims to be ready. That's all behind him. This fight should happen. All right, which brings us to uh, your keys to victory for Casamayor Morales. Joel Casamayor is looking to stay sharp for his eventual showdown with Asselino Freitas. But for Joe Morales, this is the opportunity of his life. Number one for Casamara, use his overall speed. He has it in both his hands and his feet. Number two, accurate, sharp counterpunching. He makes you miss, and he definitely makes you pay. And lastly, that straight left hand. He's so accurate and quick with it, it's amazing. Here, Casamara on the left against Roberto Garcia is going to block a right hand lead. He just stuffs it, and he slides off to his left and then fires a beautiful straight left hand right down the middle, catching Garcia on the button, dropping him to the seat of his pants. He's so quick and accurate, it's almost impossible to avoid. Joe Morales absolutely has to establish his jab. If he doesn't get the jab working, he's not going to be effective. Also, push Casimiro backward. Try and use his strength and push Casimiro back. Keep him out of his fight game. And lastly, especially against the southpaw, use the straight right hand down the middle. Here, Joe Morales with his back to us against Carlos Contreras. He's forcing Contreras back, not letting him come forward, getting his fight plan. There's a nice jab in the right hand, which gets Contreras in trouble, and he follows up with a nice combination of multiple punches, and the referee has to come in and stop this fight. As we take a look at the challenger, Joe Morales draped in an American flag, getting his first shot at a world title. Morales coming into the patriotic music, which makes us want to acknowledge an appreciation men have worked with us in our Showtime production team. New York City police officers Ray Stein and Mike Pagan, who have been down at ground zero since moment one of the September 11th tragedy. We are grateful to them and thankful to have them with us. We couldn't be prouder of Mike and Ray. As far as Morales, 
I'll tell you what, you got to give Cosmayor something to worry about in the way of power, and this guy only has four knockouts in his 17 wins, Bobby. You know, that's true, Steve. Cosmayor is one of the premier boxers in the game. If you're going to get any respect from him, you got to give him something to worry about and hurt him. This is something that has to happen. Browse has to get his pound of flesh early, or he is in big trouble. From San Antonio, Texas, Joe Morales, and he'll have to face this guy, the champion, Southpaw Joel Casamayor, tremendously seasoned, well schooled under the tutelage of Joe Goosen. And you hear the crowd get behind him. Before the end of the fourth, it's a technical draw. After the end of four, they go to the scorecard. So here at Mikasuki, we're getting ready for our main event. Joe Casamayor, Joe Morales, WBA Super Featherweight title. Let's get it up to our ring announcer, Ronnie Duncan. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you all stand right now for the customary 10 count. Boxing has lost one of its greats a gentleman who brought showtime to the featherweight and lightweight division, passed away on September 18th. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand in silence as we honor the great Sandy Sadler. in peace. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Mikasuki Indian Gaming and Resort. It is time for our main event of the evening, scheduled for 12 rounds. This bout is brought to you by America Presents and Showtime Championship Boxing. Tonight's bouts are being held under the auspices of the Mikasuki Athletic Commission. The chairman of the Mikasuki Athletic Commission is Billy Cyrus. The assistant chairman is Jasper Nelson. The remaining commissioners are Andrew Burke, Matt Billy, Jerry Cypress, 
and the counsel to the commission is Juan Vargas. The executive director is Don Hazelton, and the tribe's executive boxing consultant is Paul Herman. This bout is sanctioned and approved by the WBA, the supervisor, Jorge Humberto Clee. Our judges for this fight are Gonzalo Riveras, Al Walensky, and Rocky Young. The referee for this fight, the capable Armando Garcia. All right, fight fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBA Super Featherweight Championship of the World. Now, ladies and gentlemen, and those in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, it's showtime! <laughs> Presenting first, the challenger in the blue corner, wearing the black trunks, fighting out of San Antonio, Texas. He weighed in at 129 and one half pounds. His record includes 17 wins, five losses, and four knockouts. Please welcome Joe Morelli! His opponent across the ring needs no introduction. Wearing the red, white, and blue trunks. Fighting out of Miami, Florida by way of Guantanamo, Cuba. He weighed in at 130 pounds. His unblemished record is 25 and 0. Mr. Goose and Mr. Ayala, we agreed in the dressing room that my center ring and in the fight commands would be in Spanish. Is that clear? Yes. Muy bien. Very well. Hablamos en el camerino. Protejanse en todo momento y obedezcan en todo momento. Tengan cuidado con las cabezas. No me hagan estar rompiéndolo siempre. Cuidado con el golpe bajo. Esta será la línea aquí. Y únanse conmigo. God bless America. And we echo the words of referee Armando Garcia from Miami, Florida. Joel Casamayor, aside from staying sharp and focused, does his fight prepare him technically for Ocelino Freitas? The answer is no, but he says he has been ready for Freitas since July. And Joe Morales, very active. This is his fifth fight in 2001. No first round knockouts. One in three rounds or less. Good athlete, Rangy. He's a busy guy, but only four knockouts in 22 bouts. And Morales better get right to work as he just did with the jab. If he can find the range and keep that in Cosmero's face, gives him a little edge. He's got a slight height and reach advantage, would be nice. And if you can read the left leg sleeve of Joe Morales, you'll be touched. In memory of those lost, September 11, 2001. Joel Casamayor in the white trunks, the flag of America adorning Joe Morales. Casamayor realizing Morales prefers to box primarily from the outside. Not a big puncher. Probably has plenty of flexibility to do what he wants. Still, he told us it's not going to be easy. He's cautious, has respect. Just look at the last fight with Edwin Santana. That went the distance in a similar situation. Morales comes off his best fight, his most important fight, over Carlos Contreras. Much more experienced, although Contreras took the fight on late notice. Contreras is also moving up in weight. He fought it consistently at a lighter weight, but he looked good. Took him deep, worked him, stayed, broke him down, and eventually stopped him in the 11th round. An impressive performance for Morales. Won by 11th round TKO in June. Controlled the fight and landed a high percentage of punches. He talked about the fact, too, that if he couldn't get, get in, 
past the awkwardness of Casemiro's southward style, that he would switch to south one self and see jabbing from the right side would help him. Interesting. Casemiro, a tricky, fast nuisance southpaw, moving, punching. Those are his games. Classic stick and move, in and out, elusive, smooth, superior boxing skill. Tremendous speed, quickness, reflexes. Knows how to put the combinations together. Not known as a one-punch knockout guy. Four of Casamayor's 15 knockouts in the first, in case you're wondering. Averages just under five and a half rounds. So not in any particular hurry, but usually gets the job done in surgical-like fashion. Something that's happening here that's not, even though Morales is doing actually pretty well in this first round, he's using a lot of energy, jumping around, hopping around, herky-jerky movements, whereas Casamayor is very slow, economical, and wastes nothing. Very important if this fight gets deep. Morales said first and foremost, looking to stay busy on top of Casamayor. Box go to the body. Don't give Casamayor any time to rest. And try not to walk into anything. Joe Goosen in the corner of Casamayor. You got to go down. You got to go down. Uh, there's only three up here. Listen, tell him uh, that was very nice. I like the fact he didn't let him hit him. Okay. Now you let him know that he can't hit you. Go ahead, use your jab a little bit more. I still want him to box. Okay, but a little, a little in and out. He'll get in a little bit, but get out. Okay. Look for his body a little bit too, but don't reach for it. Where's the mouthpiece? Joe's had some Spanish uh, in his background, bits and pieces here. He's not fluent in Spanish, but you've seen him in the corner in previous times. Speaking more Spanish, now he's got an interpreter. A bilingual corner. Two different voices. In the years of Joe Casamayor, which uh, certainly aids our cause, makes it easy on us. For those who don't speak Espanol. You know, an excellent argument can be made that Morales actually won the first round. He threw a lot more punches. He missed a lot more. But he landed maybe a couple more. And for the most part, you know, didn't do badly. Cosmere just taking his time watching his opponent. Now he's going to start to step it up and work that straight left hand. You watch it. Cosmayor, who's never been down. He's been stunned. Morales never down. Cosmayor now 30. 380 amateur victories. Won the world title, fifth round TKO over Zhang Kwambek, a Korean, and a thorough domination. This is fourth defense, 25 and 0, 15 knockouts, 3 and 0 in world title bouts. Morales' first world title shot. A little accidental bang of heads. You saw Morales complain to referee. Morales 17 and 5, four knockouts, his highest rating, number 14, WBA. Cosmo starting to get the timing down with the straight left hand. You watch it be more effective as the fight goes on. Yeah, we saw that in his last fight in Philadelphia, Mississippi, with the Edwin Santana back on May 5th. It was a near shutout to retain the title. And he had Santana down early, had him in trouble. He didn't know that he was going to actually last the fight, but to his credit, Santana was a survivor. from time to time will switch to southpaw to try to confuse his opponent. Yeah, he did that briefly early in the round. And yeah, he did that against Contreras. There he goes for a split second, but he didn't throw any punches. Morales winging away, blood on the face of Morales. Tasting his own blood as it trickles into his mouth. Nothing unusual with a southpaw, and Casimir says, come on. Well, Casimir ducked and came up, and Morales came charging him with his head down a bit, and his hand's not up. Boy, Morales nearly got spun around there and off balance. 
Casamayor digging in now. Morales nodding his head in approval. Another chance of Cuba. We'll take you into the corner of Joe Morales, who's got Tony Ayala Sr. in his corner. It was an accidental headbutt that caused a laceration on his lower lip. Okay, Joey. Accidental headbutt. Come on, Mouthpiece. Open up. Open up. Huh? Yeah, I got hit in the bottom. All right. You're all right. Hmm. You're all right. You're all right. You're all right. Oh, yeah. Joe. Fucking headbutt in the mouth, motherfucker. Joe. <laughs> You see that accidental bang of heads. Casimir comes down and comes up and again. Morales has his hands down and just comes in with his head face out and they banged heads. Here he switches to southpaw jabbing with his right hand. Doesn't stay this way very long but he tries a couple of jabs. A little straight left hand. And something that's probably going to be a problem all day. There's another headbutt. Comes up right into his chin. Morales looking over at referee Armando Garcia, but it was accidental according to uh, Garcia as we uh, enter into round three. Tony Ayala Sr. in the corner of Morales said, hey, I, I know it's a tough fight, but sometimes you just have to roll the dice. And tonight, a daunting task for Morales against one of the top fighters all around in the world, Joe Casamayor. Nice left hook to the body by Morales, but he's not sitting on his punches. He's so, he's so thinking defensively that as soon as he lands, he jumps back. And he negates all that he's done to work his way in. Referee Armando Garcia with a very close eye on Casamayor uh, in light of those headbutts and barking out the words, guys, fight clean. And most of that directed towards Casamayor right now. And there's really no reason for Casamayor to do anything. Unsavory. That left hand almost has a homing device on it for everybody's head. He's straight, he's quick, and he's so accurate. Crisp sharpshooter, Joel Casamayor. Feels his biggest weapons are the straight left and the right jab. He's busy, as you can see, throws a lot of punches. And has that tremendous speed. But he is not a fast starter. Left hand straight left to the nose by Casamayor. Casamayor keeps pressing forward as the chance of Cuba once again. Ring out. As we are coming to you from the Miami area. Nice beautiful counter right hook there over a drop left hand. But Morales, Casimir, right on target. That connected cleanly. Hands up, hands up! Casimir working the jab behind the power punch, the left. Nice right hook and left hand by Casimir and Morales walked into both of them. Some good defensive maneuvering by Casimir as well, ducking under that right hand by Morales. He ducked under that one because the first one actually caught him, see. You learn from your mistakes. Oh, yeah. As we head for the bell, round three. Some interested spectators on hand here at Mikasuki. Oselito Freitas and his uh, new wife, Eliana, getting a little uh, peck on the cheek there. Freitas won earlier, but not with a knockout. He won by decision over former world champ Alfred Cote and goes to 30 0 with 29 knockouts. So his perfect knockout record goes away. Casimir doing what I call the slow walking down. He's coming in slowly, just coming through, coming through, landing punch after punch, blocking some on the way in. 
breaking down Roller Morales. Okay. Okay. Perez around Maduro. Good look at Casamayor, 25 and 0, 15 knockouts, hoping to fight Ocelino Freitas, who has already uh, had two of those encounters canceled. July and September. Freitas having uh, personal problems, and Casamayor accusing Freitas of, of ducking him. And Freitas uh, may have suffered a hairline fracture to the right hand in that first fight. We'll have to wait on that. With the two hoping to get together in early 2002, so plenty of time to heal for Freitas. <laughs> Round four, it's been all Casamayor. Morales up on his toes. Casamayor again, uh, more aggressive, coming forward, going to the body now with a one two combination. Morales has gotten through with a couple of punches. You're missing more and more as time goes on, Steve, you see. And the misses are cleaner and cleaner by more space. Morales uh, told us he was looking to stop that beautiful right jab of Casamayor, but having difficulty dealing with it. And he said one of the ways is by using his own jab, which he came out with in the first round. And by the way, I gave him the first round just because I thought he just outworked Casimir a little bit. Casimir, let's face it, would just take his time looking and feeling out. Since then, he's been all down in almost every part of every round. But now it's, now it's going to become target practice once Casimir settles in and picks it up. He's a slow starter. A little, uh, little low there for Casimir, being told by Armando Garcia to uh, bring those punches up. Yeah, Casimir, uh, more and more becoming a notoriously slow starter, but a pretty good finisher. told us yesterday sounds good theoretically but very tough to pull it off in reality he said he would try to make Casimir pay for his mistakes for example he throws the jab and then brings it down but it's not the case well you can draw it up on paper but then to have the abilities to do it in the moment of the fight uh, that's different Pants just waiting for Casamayor to jump on Morales, who's playing around a little bit. He says, all right, Joel, bring it on. And now you see Morales is out, bro. Yeah, he switches again. Second or third time we've seen him do it tonight. But it doesn't seem to be uh, confusing Casamayor much. Morales taunting Casamayor. Casamayor's wife, Scarlett, one of his three sons. That's Joel Jr., two years old, looking up. An animated Scarlett. Go out. No, no. Don't wait for him to do that. Hey, take my pression. Don't come up there, pression. Okay? Take take him a chiquito. Okay? In combination. Okay? Take his cuerpo. Okay? Fighters becoming slightly animated toward the end of the round. You see uh, Morales shaking his head and a couple of punches exchanged. A little, uh, little attitude adjustment going on in there. A little machismo game being played, Steve. That may come back to hurt good old Joe. Not Joel, but Joe. And it's round five, scheduled for 12 for the WBA Super featherweight championship this is a division that was started back in the 1920s for fighters who were too heavy for featherweight too light for lightweight it was created in New York first champion one of the all-time greats Johnny Dundee but remember the early 80s Cornelius Boza Edwards Bazooka Lamont Bobby Chacon Rolando Navarrete 
Very exciting division back then. Great rivalries. Let's take a look at the press row scoring to this point. All cost mayor. Four shots, four! Come on, Olimpio, de ahí, de ahí. Oy, 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 Referee saying don't do that to Casamayor and to Morales. Things getting a little on the uh, roughhouse side from time to time with the head butting and some low blows and some taunting by Morales. Crowd getting into it every time Casamayor comes close to doing something. And one of the things that's just so sweet about watching Casamayor, he comes and he takes his time. He never gets overly excited. He steps up when he wants to. He boxes when he wants to. Never gets emotional about anything. Just business as usual. Beautiful to watch. Today, uh, about 20 years after the so-called golden era of this division, it has been revived. Three of the four champions, including Casamayor, undefeated, charismatic. Along with Joel, there's Floyd Mayweather Jr. and uh, Ocelino Freitas. Steve Forbes, who won earlier tonight over John Brown in the rematch, has one loss, 20 wins. And of course, uh, one of the greats at uh, around this weight, a featherweight, uh, passed away recently. He was uh, honored uh, earlier by our ring announcer, Ronnie Duncan, the great Sandy Sadler, who won like three out of four over one of the best all time, Willie Pep. And uh, Sadler, highly unusual because he was so tall, rangy, lean, and had so much power. And a lot of people feel that Sandy Sadler, if he were in his prime today, would wipe out everybody at super featherweight fighting right now. Sandy Sadler was somewhat of a female, almost like a lighter Bob Foster, tall, lean, but overpowered. Final seconds, round five. And again, Morales switching to southpaw and says, bring it on, Casamayor. Landed with a straight left. And a good finish to the round for the challenger. Let's go inside the ropes with Bobby Chase. This has not been the cleanest of fights. Now we have some headbutt. This is early in round two. A little later in round two. Once again, round two, full of headbutts. And then eventually there's a nice low blow. At the end of this round, the low blows. Uh, you know what? It's a shame, but. And he's not, I don't think he's really doing it on purpose. I think he's just, the, the obviously the southpaw thing is always a problem. Stepping on feet, banging heads, the short to the tall and the styles, then the low blows I think was just a lack of concentration. Busy night for Armando Garcia. What are we gonna do, baby? We're gonna go kick the fucking ass. Right now. Hey, don't get far out. Don't get far out, Joey. Round six of this WBA Super Featherweight Championship. As we have talked about, Casamayor, often a slow starter. Joe Morales, a heavy underdog, but he's been hanging in there tough. He's been taking some nice punches. I don't think that uh, Casamayor has actually hit him with his very best yet. I think that's yet to come. Again, Casamayor, not a one-punch knockout artist, but he can sting you with his speed. A sharp, slashing puncher who can just pick you apart. But sometimes it's uh, a slow building process through the fight for Casamayor. We saw that uh, with uh, Edwin Santana, with uh, uh, Garcia, Radford Beasley. That was a pretty right hook to the body that Casamayor uh, threw, but he didn't come up top with anything. Not a, not a right hook up top, or straight left, or uppercut, nothing. Most of that uh, blocked by Casamayor, by the elbows and arms. One or two got to the belly by Morales. Casamayor seems to be taking his time quite a bit, Steve. He's just really taking his time. A little more so than usual, perhaps? I mean, it, it kind of appears that way to me. Maybe, again, it's just the clash of styles. Maybe the style he's facing, there's some extra things he needs to figure out or he wants to do. Or let Maybe Morales 
waste some extra energy. I don't know. Big wide left hand of the uh, head by Casamayor, but it only infuriates Morales. Came through with the right hand there. Missing with a wild left hook, Morales. And once again, the chance of Cuba in support of Casamayor from Guantanamo originally. Mayor in the white, 25 and 0, 15 knockouts, fourth title defense. Recently hit the 30 mark. Morales 17 and 5, four knockouts. Certainly not in the class of Casamayor, rated number 14 by the WBA. His first world title shot, three years younger than Casamayor, but he's holding his own against one of the top fighters in the world. And you notice every time Casamayor lands a good combination. Morales nods at him. So, so yeah, okay, you hit me, you hit me. I hear you. I'm still here. Kind of comical, but I understand. In almost taunting fashion. Here's Casamayor opening up. Morales's counter punches are being blocked. Casamayor getting the better of these exchanges. Now well, Morales is game. Hey, when you get close to him, Morales chasing Casamayor. Nice body work. A decent left over the top as it takes a southpaw stance. Here we see him again as a southpaw. Just you see him as a southpaw. He's staying. He's been a little more effective as a southpaw. There's a little little shimmy or <laughs> Mr. Bojangles dance from the waist up. And here are some pity pat punches that don't really land flush. But Casimir starts to come back and get a little more intentional with his bombs. There you see a beautiful left uppercut snapping the head. And again, a straight left hand down the middle, meaning business with some of the punches in that sequence. Bobby, to this point, are you wholeheartedly satisfied with what you're seeing from Casamayor tonight if he wants to establish himself as one of the best if not the best at 130 pounds and also taking into effect the last couple of fights as well with Santana Roberto Garcia are you satisfied well like I said and I always have to repeat this certain styles make for better fights Garcia didn't match up as well because he's not quite as awkward Morales is tall range awkward maybe a little tougher I'm not sure but you see him he's just he's just awkward and Casimir doesn't have all the answer for him immediately. Casimir, though, he's one of the best Whoa. fighters in the division. That's no question about that. What kind of performance we're going to get tonight still remains to be seen. WWF tactics there momentarily by Morales, who tried to uh, take Casimir down over his hip. So you think it's uh, chalk up to the style of his opponent tonight that he can't uh, take him out? His style and his toughness. He's shown a pretty good chin. Casimir has hit him with some very good left hands, two, three in a row. Some right up with and hooks as well. And Morales is, you know, he's decided, hey, I want to be here too. I want to get my pound of flesh. And he's swinging and he's fighting back. But this has been the case for uh, three fights in a row. Edwin Santana, not a big hitter, took him the distance. And Roberto Garcia, he took to the ninth to finally stop Garcia. A tough fighter in his own right, no question about it. Not only tough, but a much better offensive machine. He has a bomb right hand, a good left hook. Garcia went undefeated for many years. Great fighter. But it just makes you wonder. Would you like to see more of a sense of urgency out of Casamayor? Does he? Would you like to see a dramatic, emphatic knockout here as he nails Morales and gets the crowd going? And Morales pulled like a Muhammad Ali, yeah. where he actually acted like he was staggered and dove in a punch of his own. He continues to uh, sort of make fun of Casamayor here. For, for you know, for me, my style, my thought process. Yes, I'd love to see him step it up, pick it up, and make a statement. But that's not necessarily his style. That may throw him out of his natural game plan. All right. There is 
mud on Morales' brow, I believe the right side. Blood all over the face of Morales now. Not sure if it was a punch or a headbutt. There's that Muhammad Ali thing again by uh, Morales taunting Casamayor, making as if he's hurt or not hurt, but usually that's the reason that he is hurt. The stare down. He's trying to get inside the head of Casamayor, but that can't be easy. I don't know if he's trying to get inside his head or just let him know that I'm here to stay no matter how hard you hit me. I'm going to take it and come back. No, you're getting hit too much. Come on, come on, come on. Hurry the game. Morales coming in as a southpaw. Kind of a little WWF there. A little spin and flip and toss. Later he gets hit with a nice left hand. Right hook, excuse me, down the middle. And he does his little, he does his little shimmy, his little dance. Uh, I, I don't know how effective it is, but I'm getting a kick out of it. They're having trouble, Bobby, in the corner there, trying to stop the bleeding. Of Joe Morales, cut man Victor Rodriguez working furiously on the cut, and it's not, it's not clotting, it's not stopping, and that could really factor in here, as referee Armando Garcia takes a very close look at the face of Morales. It is round eight. Casamayor has uh, controlled the fight. Morales showing toughness. All Casamayor here, working the face. And you notice he's economically doesn't waste punches. He doesn't get in a hurry, and he lands crisply and cleanly. Quick report from Jim Gray. Well, Steve, as you mentioned, they cannot stop the bleeding on Joe Morales, and that cut is just being picked on and picked on right now by Casamayor. It is a problem. It is dripping directly right down into his left eye, and on good shots, it's even jumping over to the right eye, so he's going to have a vision problem. Steve. Jim Casamayor surgically taking the face apart of Joe Morales now. Like a shark seeing blood. But Morales gamely fighting back. There's definitely no quit in uh, Morales. He's, he's shown that every time he gets hit really hard. He does a little dance for the crowd to let him know he's okay. Whether he's hurt or not. In defeat. His stock will go up if he loses. Left hand followed by a right by Casamayor, still working that target. The head of Morales. Those punches were blocked by Joe Morales. There seems to be blood in the left eye of uh, Morales, uh, but seems a little better. It's not smudged all over his face, but now a referee, Armando Garcia, may call the doctor in to see if it's too much. What did you say? The doctor is really in my eye. Come on, come on. What is the doctor in Mark Gordon, the doctor. Pretty good one. Right. You're going to go four more rounds? I don't think so. I mean, really, man. Oh, they're waving it off. Mark Gordon said, can he go four more rounds? I don't think so. The, the doctor can stop it, but he'll make the suggestion, and Armando Garcia, the ref, said, okay, I'm going to stop it. I've never seen a referee not take the doctor's recommendation, because that just wouldn't make sense. Well, yeah, yeah. those are the rules, nevertheless, and the uh, flag of Cuba here in this uh, heavily Cuban crowd. Joe Casamayor consoling uh, Joe Morales right now. This fight is stopped in the eighth as uh, Morales is unable to continue with that cut around the left eye that uh, was uh, clouding his vision and it was actually seems like it was getting better at the time but that was at the point when Garcia uh, pulled over the uh, doctor, Dr. Gordon and uh, he said, I don't think so. And Garcia agreed. All right, there's a possible future opponent for uh, uh, Joel Casamayor, Ocelino Freitas, who won by decision. That's right, by decision earlier tonight. If you just 
uh, joining us or flipping around, and uh, it was not a knockout to keep his perfect knockout streak alive. He went to 30 and 0, 29 KOs with a decision over former Bantamweight champ Alfred Cote. Joel Casamayor victorious tonight with an eight round TKO. Casimir consistently backing up Morales, taking pot shots at the eye, just pecking, coming in, no sense of urgency, just working it, working it, working it. And the eye is very ugly, and it was very, very bloody. As he got close to us, you could see how big that cut was. Dripping right down in his eyes. Horrible cut in a horrible place. Just punch after punch, landing on the side of his face, adding to the misery of that eye. Just before the stoppage, Gosmer just again taking his time, no sense of urgency ever. Just working methodically, systematically taking apart his opponent. Today he was surgeon like zeroing in on that eye and cutting it out. And no argument from Morales. And eventually the referee looks at it and he sees that how much blood's coming out of the eye. We're squirting. So Casamayor lifting his record to 26 and 0, 16 knockouts. Has that WBA belt draped around his body. Morales drops to 17 and 6. So it should be, we hope, Casamayor's final tune-up for uh, getting in the ring with Asselino Freitas to unify the two belts. There's a kiss from his wife Scarlett. Casamayor insists he was always ready for Asselino Freitas. Let's get it over to Ronnie Duncan, our ring announcer. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Armando Garcia stopped this contest at two minutes and four seconds of round number eight due to a cut over the eye. The winner and still WBA IBF super featherweight champion of the world, Paul Casa Mayor, the WBA super featherweight champion. So the fourth title defense for Costa Mayor as the fight is stopped in the eighth round because of the cut over the left eye of Joe Morales. And Costa Mayor now 26-0, 16 knockouts. And we'll just have to wait and see now what happens in terms of Costa Mayor and Freitas. Let's go up into the ring and uh, hear what the Everybody has to say to Jim Gray. Jim? All right, thank you very much, Steve. Joel, congratulations, Joel. Luis de Cubas will translate for us. Were you as sharp as you thought you could be tonight? Estaba bien afilado esta noche. Pensaba que estaba bien tan afilado esta noche. Sí, yo esta noche estaba bien porque me entré como entrenando, me siento bien preparado. Y como digo, bueno, si no se da la dos cerrados, no es por pero como es muy difícil, rápido, él no nos pega, pero... You know, I trade for two months for this fight. I took this guy very seriously. I was ready to go 12 rounds to this guy. You know, he's a little bit of an awkward guy. He never been, you know, the guy never been off his feet, so he knew he was ready for a fight. He could go 12 rounds. So he just decided he was going to relax and bust him up with a, with a front hand. Clearly, you were in control of this entire fight tonight. Uh, Steve Albert said it was like a shark with blood in the water once you were able to open his left eye. Was that the feeling that you had? Ah, tú, lo, 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 cuando lo, lo abriste con qué, con, con, con un jab o con un gancho izquierdo? Lo abriste con, con un gancho izquierdo. I, I got him coming in with a left, with a, with, 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 a, with a right hook, and that's where I cut him up. I opened him up. What next? ¿Qué es próximo? El próximo Frita. Está por ahí, llámalo. Ajá. Ah. Next, next one's Freitas. He's in the ring. Now we, we won the IBA World Belt yeah. and the WBA. Now we got two belts. We're going for all of them. Let's bring him in. Yeah, come on. Okay. Come on in here. Okay. Gentlemen, this has been postponed for a couple of times, and now there's an announcement that will be made. Well, there will be an announcement made, and I guess we're going to do it now. So you two will face one another. And uh, what about the postponement? Uh, you have postponed this fight twice now, and, and it will take place. Uh, are you ready this time? Or are your problems behind you? He, he knows it's going to be a great fight, and, and, and whoever wins is going to be the best. You have called this man a princess. 
you've been very upset <laughs> that he has not shown up the past couple of times. Uh, are you happy now to finally have this fight uh, uh, seemingly that we've been put together here shortly? Esto es parte del show. Yo pero yo yo tengo un respeto el respeto a él y ese es parte del show porque él es un hombre Anyway, it's most valuable, but it's a show. It's a show, it's a promotion, you know, you know, he's a human being just like him, you know, respect him, he's a great fighter, you know, the guy, I call him the Duran of the year 2000. He's a great fighter, you know, the guy, I say, you know, I call him the Duran of the of the year 2000. You know, I think it's a great, great, great showdown, you know, you got a great boxer against a great puncher, and that's what great, great makes great fights. A great fight for Latin America and South America and for all America. All right, gentlemen, stand by here. We're going to bring in the promoters, and we're going to announce the date here in a few minutes. Let's go over to Steve Albert ringside, and we'll continue with this in just a few moments. All right, uh, Jim, uh, let's see how the scoring went for Casamayor versus uh, Morales. First, we'll take a look at the official uh, judges' scorecards through the uh, seven rounds. Gonzalo Rivera's Al Walensky, Rocky Young also all had it in favor of uh, Casamayor uh, pretty convincingly there. Let's see, Rivera's had it uh, the biggest disparity. 70-64. And the press row scoring, Manolo Alvarez, Santos Perez, Jesus Suarez all had it uh, convincingly through seven for, for Casamayor as well. So really no contest. And the online, same uh, story, Casamayor uh, through seven had it six rounds to one. Looking ahead, let's see what boxing coverage is coming up in the near future here on Showtime. Showbox, the new generation, returns in two weeks with two of the most exciting young prospects in boxing today. Unbeaten lightweight sensation Francisco Panchito Bajado takes on Eliezer Contreras and undefeated super middleweight Jeff Lacey squares up against Levon Easley at 5 p.m. Eastern and Pacific. Later that night, former undisputed heavyweight champion Mike Tyson returns to the ring versus hometown hero Brian Nielsen from Copenhagen, Denmark. Don't miss this Showtime special Saturday, October 13th at 10 p.m. Eastern and Pacific. And then on November 3rd, we'll present the much-anticipated 140-pound unification bout between WBA and WBC champion Kostya Zhu and undefeated IBF champ Zab Judah at 10 p.m. Eastern and Pacific. Catch this exciting action of the coming weeks only on Showtime. Well, we look forward to those upcoming fights, and uh, right now, as promised, let's swing it back upstairs to Jim Gray. Jim? All right, Steve, well, they're going to make the announcement official now. I have Matt Tinley of America Presents and Art Falulo of Banner Promotions. We flipped a coin. We're going to let you go first, Matt. Uh, lost the coin toss. When is this fight going to take place? Uh, beginning of January. Artie and I almost ha I have everything uh, wrapped up. Um, it's going to be a go beginning of January. It should be a hell of a fight, Jim. Do you know where it will take place? Um, I like it right down the road at the American Airlines Arena, but Artie has a difference of opinion on that. And where would you like to see this happen, uh, Artie? Well, I have an arena in uh, Brazil that would be a <laughs> terrific location for the fight. But probably the fight belongs in Las Vegas. That's where all the big fights are. That's where this type of fight should be. I do want to say one thing. If it wasn't for Jay Larkin to put us all together to get it done, the fight would not have come off so we can get this unification done by January. Why, Artie, has this taken so long? And how can we assure the public who's watching tonight that, in fact, it will take place? after your two cancellations well those are we don't have enough time for all of those answers but they just let's just say now that Asselino is the wbo junior lightweight world champion he's got a great trainer he's very happy the fight is on we are going to be there and we're going to win the fight and i know they think they are too will your hand be okay will his hand be okay please tell us oscar Cuando su mano va a estar lista. Then we'll be okay because the doctor already checked it. It's no fracture. Basically, it's bruised from all. No problem. No, no problem. Okay. No problem. Listo. Listo. How about how about fighting this guy? What about this guy? Are you most concerned about with now just a, a few months really to prepare? ¿Qué es lo que más te preocupa de él para la preparación para la pelea la próxima pelea con él? No, a mí no me preocupa nada. Yo soy un peleador de experiencia. Él me va a preparar con todas sus cualidades, su golpe y a prepararnos. I'm a, I'm, I'm a fighter with a lot of experience, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna condition myself, I'm gonna prepare myself, like I can condition myself for every fight, okay? I'm ready to fight. Gentlemen, we look forward to this fight, everybody is. It'll take place early in 2002, January. Not in Brazil, probably in Las Vegas, maybe in Miami. We'll have that announcement when we have further information, Steve. Back to Miami. you. <laughs> and there they are, thank you, Jim. Joel Casamayor and Asselino Freitas, 
hopefully we'll get together in the same ring sometime uh, in early 2002.